cheeseburger. This is a special soup called pho. You told me not to say that word. Not every national delicacy consists of pizza or baguettes. Here are the 10 worst traditional foods in the world. Tarantula, Cambodia. Unless he can fly, can tarantulas fly? Cambodia is not the only place where spiders and insects are consumed. There are many places around the world where bugs are consumed and considered a delicacy. The idea of chomping down on a fried spider is less than appealing to most people and downright terrifying for those who are scared of spiders to begin with. It's a specific species of tarantula native to a specific region in Cambodia that is traditionally used for this food item. The spider itself can get to be about as big as an average human's palm, which which is an absolutely freaky thought. Mom, I'm scared. Traditionally, these arachnids had become a part of the everyday diet of people when other food sources had become scarce, and the tradition has just carried through the years and continued on. So even if other food is plentiful, these fried spiders are still consumed. It's said that they're crunchy to eat, but their insides are more soft and gooey with what people describe as white meat inside. The thought of a tarantula being cooked or consumed is enough to make most people lose their appetite and perhaps even make their skin crawl a bit. This does not stop other people from enjoying this traditional meal, though it's pretty unlikely to ever be a hit on a wider scale. First time here? Well, what are you waiting for? Take a quick second to hit that subscribe button. It's that easy. Thanks so much. Haukart, Iceland. Give us some answers or you'll get a mouthful of rotten shark fermented in its own urine. Iceland has their own tradition when it comes to fermenting fish, which is really not surprising considering their coastal proximity and the fact that fermenting used to be the only way to make sure that the fish meat stayed edible for extended periods of time. Fridges are a fairly new invention when you consider how long humans have been around, so methods for keeping and storing food had to be developed well before fridges. Hakart is shark meat from local waters, more specifically and often used are Greenland sharks. The meat from these sharks is cured by using a time-honored method, which includes covering the meat in sand and gravel for 6 to 12 weeks, after which it's hung to dry for several more months. The shark meat is poisonous when freshly caught, and the meat is essentially pressed between the sand, rocks, and gravel in order to extract the poisonous juices before it's dried. This is the more traditional way of curing the meat, though modern methods have been developed that use plastic containers instead of sand and gravel, which is probably the easier and quicker method. While this is a traditional food in Iceland, most people would likely not be able to tolerate the scent or taste. How Kart has been compared to the taste of ammonia and very strong blue cheese, as well as being described as very chewy. Durian, Southeast Asia. Oh, it's a durian! Durian is a fruit that's likely more widely known than some of the other traditional foods on this list. Durian has a strong and spiky husk, and when you manage to make your way through this husk, you'll be greeted with a very strong and foul smell. This scent has been described as smelling similar to more than one different rotten food, as well as sewage. For a large majority of people who attempt to try this fruit, they'll not even make it past the odor, which is so strong that it can be faintly noticed before you even break in. Into it. The scent of the durian fruit is so bad that in many places around the world, it's banned on public transport, hotels, and other public areas. It's also dangerous to eat while consuming alcohol. What is this? It's food poisoning. Studies have shown that the durian's high sulfur contents inhibits the body's ability to process alcohol as it normally would, and has in the past caused several deaths because of it. There are many species of durian fruit, and in more recent years, it has been crossbred several times to create two new variations of the fruit. One type is bred specifically not to smell at all, so people can enjoy the taste without worrying about getting past the scent, and the other is bred specifically so it does not start to smell until at least three days after being picked, so that it can be transported without worry of the scent offending anyone along the way. Kazumartsu, Sardinia. Jesus, amazing. It melts in my mouth and in my hands. 
Cheese is a much-loved food item among many cultures, with all sorts of flavors and textures available for all kinds of tastes. Whether it's consumed on its own or used in other dishes, it's a versatile and tasty dairy product. Despite the fact that cheese is so popular among consumers around the world, there is one tradition from Sardinia that would likely not be popularized among those that enjoy cheese. Kazumarzu is made using a certain type of sheep's milk cheese and introducing a specific species of fly larvae to it. The larvae then spend their time eating the cheese and leaving behind excrement that is softer than the initial cheese. The larvae digest the fat in the cheese, and this becomes a sort of advanced fermentation process that leaves behind the softer style cheese and a little bit of liquid. The cheese left behind by the larvae is then eaten, typically taken and spread on some sort of flatbread. I have the tingle thing, just not for bread. The maggots must be alive in the cheese in order for it to be considered safe to eat. Unless, of course, the maggots died after the cheese was placed in the fridge to be refrigerated. The thought of eating cheese that has traveled through the digestive tract of fly larvae and out the other end is not exactly an appetizing sounding snack, but it's a traditional practice that has been around for a long time and, while banned in many countries, is still occasionally eaten today. Sir Strumming, Sweden. It smells like fish. You guys smell that? Yeah, it does smell like fish. Sir Strumming is probably one of the traditional food items that is most known internationally. While there are people who do enjoy this food, it's not something that anyone would consider mainstream, especially on a global scale. Sir Strumming is made of herring that is fermented and lightly salted and has been a traditional Swedish food item since around the 16th century. The Sir Strumming is salted just enough to prevent the small fish from rotting as it ferments for at least six months, which is responsible for the very very strong odor of the fish. It's said that Sir Strumming has a somewhat acidic taste, and the smell of a newly opened container of Sir Strumming has one of the most putrid food smells in the world, hence its reputation of being disgusting. Ew, ew, ew. While the taste of the fish itself may not be as bad as some people think, it's often extremely hard to get past the initial smell of it. Fermenting fish is a very old tradition and used to be popular, and a lot of times the only way for people to preserve fish before it's spoiled. If you can get past the smell, Sir Strumming may be worth trying to see if you like the taste. But if you can't get past the taste, don't worry, you're not alone. Natto, Japan. Japanese! Soybeans are a food item enjoyed in many places around the world, and on their own, they're not something that would belong on this list. Natto, specifically, is not something that is enjoyed by nearly as many people as regular soybeans are. Natto is a food item that dates back several thousands of years in Japan, and people these days have chosen to carry forth the tradition of fermenting and eating natto. This traditional dish is made with soybeans that are fermented by adding a specific type of bacteria. The process first starts by washing the soybeans in water and soaking them for 12 to 20 hours. After this soaking process, they are then steamed for up to 6 hours. Once the soybeans have been soaked and steamed, they are then introduced to the specific bacteria. At this point, great care is taken to make sure the soybeans and bacteria do not get contaminated by other bacteria. They are then fermented at specific temperatures for up to 24 hours. The scent of natto is said to be unpleasant, with consumers saying that it reminds them of very pungent cheese or perhaps even old socks. Why are we going? It smells like cheese under here! While it's not the worst smelling food item out there, it doesn't sound too appealing to eat, when, to top it off, natto has a distinctly slimy texture, which is enough on its own to turn many people away from eating it. Century Eggs, China well, I guess you can't make an omelet without breaking a few eggs, am I right? Century eggs are a bit misleading when you hear the name, since no, they are not, in fact, a hundred years old. This does not make them any less tasty to the general consumer, however. Century eggs are made with either duck, chicken, or quail eggs that go through a specific preserving and fermenting process to greatly alter their taste, texture, look, and scent. Traditionally, century eggs were first made as a necessity for those who needed to preserve eggs for as long as possible. The eggs were coated in clay in an attempt to keep them from going bad as quickly as they would if they were just left to sit. Last one to find the rotten egg is a rotten egg. 
While the production methods have been advanced for this particular food item to include more than just clay, the process is still very much the same. The eggs are coated in a mixture of minerals and left to ferment inside their shelves for several months. The resulting food is a brownish, grayish product that looks and smells less than appetizing. While this food item is often used for special events or day-to-day -day consumption, the majority of international households are not likely to adopt this dish for their own celebratory meals. Fermented Fish Heads, Alaska Why is there wild salmon, not farm-raised salmon, but wild salmon on the menu? Alaska is known as one of the toughest places to live on Earth, with a large portion of the state not even inhabited by humans. Only the strongest-willed people tend to live there, though it can be a popular tourist destination. Salmon is a staple food for people in Alaska, as it's a steady food source that can be easily harvested year-round and prepared in different ways. This includes fermenting the heads of salmon and consuming the end product. The heads are not fermented using any really unique or special process, they're usually sealed in either a hole in the ground or in some sort of plastic bag or container and left to rot into a mush. This mush is then consumed. Kopi Luwak Coffee, Indonesia Kopi Luwak is the world's most expensive coffee. Cat poop is not entirely something that most people would consider a delicacy on any level. However, in Indonesia, there is a traditional coffee which is made from exactly that. Called kopi luwak coffee, the process of making this coffee starts with harvesting the cherries of the coffee plant and feeding them to a small, wild cat-like animal called the Asian palm civet. This small cat looks almost like a cross between a cat, a possum, and a raccoon, and is often poached and eliminated legally sold, mostly for the purpose of producing Kopi Lua coffee. This animal is fed the coffee cherries, which are then partially digested before they are defecated out. The digestion process does not fully digest the coffee and instead ferments the bean before it's collected and used to brew the actual coffee. Producers say that not only does the fermenting process improve the taste of the coffee, but also the animals themselves are said to select the best quality coffee cherries for consumption, meaning that only the highest quality ones are chosen and then subsequently used in the production of the coffee itself. I go for quality over quantity. The idea that their coffee was brewed from coffee beans that had passed through the digestive tract of an animal is not likely to be widely appealing, but if someone was served this coffee without knowing, it's likely they would not even notice anything was off, as it's said to taste just like a lot of other coffees on the market, only a lot more expensive. Gomutra, India <laughs> ah, That's not lemon! No, it's not. A traditional practice that has been in place for thousands of years in India is the consumption of cow urine, or gomutra. While its exact roots cannot be traced exactly, it has been used for a very long time. Ayurvedic, which is a natural medicinal practice that originated in India several thousand years ago, states that the cow urine has plenty of health benefits. While any cow urine can technically be used, it's said that the urine taken from a pregnant cow is the best to use due to the extra hormones and minerals. Objection! Unhealthy! While there's no scientific evidence to say that cow urine is or is not healthy for you, it's packed with things such as sodium and potassium, which are things your body does need. Whether or not this practice does truly have health benefits, it's highly unlikely that it will ever catch on with the mainstream public. Cow urine is not exactly something most people would think of when taking something for the health benefits, but it very well could be better for you than you would think. Check out more great videos. Just tap or click, hit that subscribe button, and ring that notification bell.